What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. Today we're continuing our coverage of the insane price action of GameStop stock, which is up more than 20% today on January 26th at the time of recording this video. The stock has increased in value by more than 375% since the initial short squeeze on January 13th and shows no signs of slowing down. During this saga, short sellers were forced to cover their positions as the stock moved higher. This has clearly been painful as short sellers have collectively lost more than $4 billion shorting GameStop since the beginning of the year. Despite these losses, new hedge funds started stepping in and the stock's short interest has actually increased slightly to 139% despite the stock more than quadrupling. This certainly puts GameStop in uncharted territory as it may be the first time ever that a stock's short interest has actually increased after such a massive squeeze. This bizarre situation goes to show how contentious the battle between Wall Street bets and so-called investment professionals on Wall Street has become. This battle has even been brought to the mainstream, with the Wall Street Bets community finding an unlikely ally in CNBC's Jim Cramer, who debates a boomer Wall Street professional about the legitimacy of Wall Street Bets' actions. Heard them, we think. They're after the ones that are too shorted. No, short selling is not dead, but they're very smart about what to target. Wait a minute. What you just said, target. <laughs> so here's my question. How is it that they can target and that's legal. And if there was, in the old days, a bear raid, that was illegal. When does this become manipulation, Jim? It's such a tough question, because remember, what's manipulation? How about if an analyst came out right now and said, I think GameStop is going to 250? Would we give that, that person a, a pass? Yes, because of the very First different. Amendment. Very, no, very, no, very, listen very to different. me. It's First Amendment protection versus the idea of a group getting together to bust the shorts. But if the group is not a real group, it's just a lot of people who love it, it's going to be very hard for the U.S. attorney to do anything, Herb. What is it? The SEC. They're not, they're, what kind of case do they have? We like the stock. We like the stock. I mean, that's... That's the kid where Ryan Cohen got so, in. He bought 15% at $8. He's on the board. We like the stock. How is that bad? Or do you think that they're concentrated and doing some sort of manipulation if they say they like the stock? Well, I don't know if they're concentrated because I don't have subpoena power and I can't really go well, out and look at it. Your I, don't even, I, I can, I can <laughs> argue. I don't even know if there are foreign powers at work here behind Please the scenes stop. trying to make chaos off our markets. Let me ask you this. The boomer on the CNBC panel resorted to conspiracy theories about foreign powers being involved to try to slander Wall Street bets. In response, a Wall Street bets moderator points out that these short sellers crying wolf about manipulation on the part of Wall Street bets are actually master stock manipulators themselves. It's a common practice among short sellers to short a stock and then go on to CNBC or Bloomberg saying the company is a fraud in an effort to push shares lower. For example, in May of 2020, prominent short seller Carson Block went on CNBC announcing a short position in Chinese education company GSX, saying 70% of their revenue was fraudulent. This call turned out to be completely wrong and the stock has increased almost 200% since he made the announcement. Short sellers use public short reports as a tool to try to push a stock lower with stocks often suffering double digit losses on the same day. While it's fine to disclose legitimate research to the investing public, the problem arises when short sellers include misleading or incomplete information in their reports. For example, Citron's Andrew Leff was found guilty by Hong Kong authorities on charges of market manipulation. In 2012, Citron shorted Chinese property developer Evergrande Group and released a short report which included false and misleading claims about the company. As a result of this charge, he was banned from trading Hong Kong listed stocks for five years. Boomers like this guy on CNBC falsely accuse Wall Street Bets users of market manipulation in an attempt to intimidate retail investors and divert attention away from the real abuses happening on Wall Street. But the fact of the matter is that talking about these stocks and posting gain porn on Reddit is protected by the First Amendment. There's nothing these short sellers can do to stop the power of Wall Street Bets. GameStop's short squeeze has demanded interest from Wall Street's biggest players. It remains on the front page of financial news outlets. At about 11.30 on January 26th, billionaire investor and spearhead of the likes of Virgin Galactic, Chamath Palihapitiya, tweeted his support for GameStop. He bought out-of-the-money calls less than a month out on GameStop, 10 hours after he promised to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars into a YOLO. He bought 115 strike calls expiring on February 19th, 2021. Those calls currently trade around $25.5 per option, or $2,500 per contract. Chamath bought 50 contracts, or roughly $125,000 worth of the GameStop YOLO. However, Chamath is not the only billionaire hedge fund giant entering the fray around GameStop. Ken Griffin, the billionaire founder of Citadel and Citadel Securities, two of the most successful hedge funds and high-frequency trading shops in the world, is now involved in a short squeeze. 
but he isn't on the side of Wall Street bets. On January 25th, it was reported that Citadel, along with Point72, another giant hedge fund and quant shop based in Stamford, Connecticut, bailed out Melvin Capital to the tune of $2.75 billion. Melvin Capital is the long short hedge fund that was massively short GameStop in the early days and has lost hundreds of millions of dollars on their short position in the past week. It was founded by Superstar Portfolio Manager at Point72, Gabe Plotkin, in 2014. Both Ken Griffin and Point72 owner Stephen Cohen expressed their support for Melvin Capital, saying Gabe was, quote, an exceptional investor and leader. We are pleased to have the opportunity to invest additional capital. Ken Griffin said, quote, Gabe Plotkin and team have delivered exceptional results over the history of Melvin. We have great confidence in Gabe and his team. Ken Griffin and Steve Cohen rank number three and four on the Forbes list for richest hedge fund managers in the world. So when these giants throw their weight around on Wall Street, it's a big deal. So what's going to happen to GameStop and this whole drama going forward? Twitter user ZeroHedge tweeted that the short squeeze is no longer a battle between the shorts and Reddit. It is now a billionaire battle between Chamath Palihapitiya and Ken Griffin. Chamath replied to that tweet that he will win the battle. There's a good chance that he is just trolling because his $125,000 YOLO into GameStop calls is chump change compared to his billions. But the fact that such a hardened Wall Street titan is engaging in the short squeeze on the side of Wall Street bets is just more evidence that the battle between Wall Street bets and the short sellers is accelerating. Quick pause, click the link in the description below to get $30 cash for free when you deposit $100 into a new individual account on M1 Finance. M1 Finance is an innovative new personal finance app that lets you invest, borrow, and spend all from one app. Of course, Chamath Palihapitiya is one of the heroes of Wall Street bets, so his tweet triggered a hysteria of posts and comments on the forum. User Me says that although most people on Wall Street bets don't know jack about what is going on in the markets, all you need to know is that shares equals power. They make the point that when there are at least 2 million Wall Street bets followers, the forum gains unstoppable power and the money then follows. Apparently, Chamath last year said publicly that hedge fund managers should go bankrupt. This puts him squarely within the common interest of Wall Street bets, especially now that not only Melvin and Citron, but Citadel and Point72 are also taking the opposite side of the trade to Wall Street bets. ...investors in the world. They deserve to get wiped out. But the employees don't get wiped out. The pensions don't typically get wiped out. Why does anybody... Des- I just don't understand. Why does anybody deserve, using your word, to get wiped out from a, a, a crisis created like, like this? How, how does anybody deserve to get wiped don't. out? Well, but, but, but just be clear, like, who are we talking about? We're talking about a hedge fund that serves a bunch of billionaire family offices? Who cares? Let them get wiped out. Who cares? They don't get the summer in the Hamptons? Who cares? He also recently announced on Twitter that he is running for governor of California on the platform of 0% income taxes, higher teacher salaries, and new climate-friendly jobs. This guy is unstoppable, and if he's serious about his investment in GameStop, that means serious trouble for the short sellers around the world. The story of GameStop has certainly been one of the most exciting and unpredictable stories in investment history, with the stock moving more than 20% just during the time that I've been recording this video. I am not a financial advisor, and frankly have no idea where GameStop stock will go over the next days and months. But if you have any thoughts on the company, please let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.